Hello everyone, today we're talking about Victorian death photos. Photographing dead family members was a trend in Victorian Britain, designed to honor and remember the dead, one that is kind of disturbing to our modern sensibilities. This was, however, a popular trend at a time when cameras were a new technology. To put this into context of why this might have been acceptable, you need to understand that most people prior to the mid-1800s did not have a single photo of themselves. If you had a family member who died around this time, a photo of them deceased might be the family's only chance for a photograph. All these photos I am showing you are Victorian death photos. They may seem in bad taste and disturbing to us now, no doubt, but they were at least at the time taken with good intention. In the 1800s, there were many ways to prematurely die. Pneumonia, flu, tuberculosis, bacterial infections were all common ways to die. Sadly, in large families of the time, deaths were common major events. Life expectancy in 1850s Britain was 40 for men and 42 for women, though by 1900 it grew to 45 and 50. By the mid-20th century, life expectancy grew significantly, largely due to vaccines, antibiotics, and better sanitation. The concept of creating post-mortem portraits actually didn't begin with photography. This was something that was done in artwork, but only affordable for wealthy families. This, for example, is the Duke of Devonshire's brother from 1638. Photography did more to expand the call-it-art to the average family. Though hiring a death photographer, which was a profession, still was relatively expensive, requiring care and good taste, the common myth is that these photographers strapped and tied bodies in living poses. This is sensational history. It may have occasionally happened, but the vast majority of these photos were either of the dead being held and supported by a loved one, or simply looking peacefully asleep. This myth likely stems from the many stands which were in fact at the time to make the living more comfortable. Photography in the 1800s required subjects to hold poses for minutes at a time, depending on the lighting conditions. Stillness reduced any blur. This is one reason why people never smile in old photos, and the living sometimes tend to look dead. Try holding a smile for five minutes. Photographers could apply makeup to a subject, but usually the subject was just made to seem asleep, though eyes were sometimes opened by a family member if they so chose. Another option was to have open eyes painted on a daguerreotype, which was the earliest form of commercially available photo. These photos were processed on sheets of silver-plated copper. Another strange way Victorians practiced memorializing the dead was to create a death mask. A mask maker would make a plaster mold over a person's face. This is a practice that dates back to the ancient world. Some doctors in Victorian times even took molds to study phrenology, a popular pseudoscience of the time that studied bumps on the skull to explain mental traits. Though Victorian ways of memorializing and remembering the dead may seem disturbing to us today, this was just part of grieving for thousands during a time when death was truly everywhere, and that too is hard for many to comprehend. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little overview on some weird Victorian history. Do you want me to cover more Victorian history or more strange history? Let me know in the comments section, and feel free to give a thumbs up.